It's the middle of January. And the last time I was out in the garden was the first day of the year. So I felt like poking around a little bit to see what's happening, if anything. And uh, I've been waiting for a nice day to do it. But we have had the crummiest weather. It is three o'clock in the afternoon right now. And it looks like it's like 6.30. This is as bright as it got today. And it's 40 degrees out, so it's pretty nippy. Not cold enough for it to be snowy and exciting. But we have lots of rose hips. Maybe I should try to make some tea. And there's still lots of green happening. I don't think there's any, well, that's a violet right there, my white violet, so that's good. But I don't see any actual, and these leaves right here, that's the dame's rocket. All that purple that we have in the spring, these, they're a biennial, so these, are going to be this year's flowers. And here, some of my nice, vigorous irises, which they look great. And actually, I might this year pull up a lot of these Hespers because I bought seeds and stuff that I want to try to sow and have some seeds, seedlings of things that I really want but are too expensive to buy by the plant. Like delphiniums, I would love to see delphiniums all in here. And one year I did have them, um, but it was really expensive. So I wanna do, I wanna grow them and see how that happens or works. Um, but there's not a lot here happening. Here's the uh, sweet autumn clematis that grows. I'm trying to get it to grow up into this tree. I need to look that up. I don't think I'm supposed to cut it, but I'm gonna look that up. And uh, there's another, there's another clematis in here that looks pretty dead. Um, I don't know if, yeah. I, I don't think I'm supposed to cut this one. This is one. It looks dead, but it's not. I think that's one I'm not supposed to cut. I have to look that one up too. Um, so we need to do some clematis research. Let's go check out the pond. Here's another pile of autumn clematis. There used to be that, that garden swing that you can't see, it's on the other side of that bush, but that garden swing that's over there used to be here with the with this clematis growing over the top of it. And I moved the swing, but the clematis wants to hang on. Let's see, the water is clear. Well, I see fish. Can you see them in the camera? Swimming around in there, that's awesome. Here, I'm gonna go stand over here where the, uh, Although I really do love the reflections in the water. I'm gonna stand over here where you can see the fish. I don't know, can you see the fish now they moved? Uh-oh, it's raining. Well, that's par for the course. Our weather here has been awful.
And <clears throat> over here, this vibrant green, it really shows up on this dull day. Um, these are my fever few plants, and there's lots of them here. I'm gonna spread them out throughout the garden. And you wouldn't, you wouldn't recognize this as, as the fernery, except for the swing that I never took down. Because the ferns are all gone. The only thing you see now, and they're okay, are these lovely ivy. This rock and the rock next to it have been here since the very first time I made a garden here. And I put them there to, to mark the spot where I pl planted some bulbs. I planted Fritillaria imperialis right there. And it did flower and grow for a couple of, for a couple of, uh, years but that little uh, rock landmark is still there from that and there's a lot of ivy on my bunching cherry tree there's even some ivy coming up this lilac, which is fine. I don't mind it. Oh, check this out. Now these leaves right here are cyclamen. Hardy cyclamen, not the kind you buy in the supermarket. Those are flora cyclamen. These don't have such showy flowers, but they do have beautiful cyclamen type flowers on them. But look at them. I planted a whole bunch of little cyclamen bits here. Um, they're actually a little tuber, like a little crown. And then right next to it, this plant right here. This was a gift from my son. It was one of those boxes of roots that you get in the supermarket. He bought for me when he was little. And it's a jack in the pulpit. And man, it seems to be doing well here. I should get some hellebores to put in this spot. Hey, you know what? I do have something to put over here. I bought myself these Gothera plants for myself for Christmas. How about that? The uh, cyclamen. And these here leaves of ivy I, I, I like the way they go really good with the cyclamen leaves. And these are also have striking variegation, so I like this little thing going on over here. But I think the Gothera, with its smaller leaves, will be a fine addition to this space over here. And here, here's the tag, wintergreen Gothera. If you want to look that up. But it's a shade lover, and I've always wanted. Oh, and it, its leaves do. Its leaves. It, its leaves, and I believe it's red berries. Here's some of the red berries right here. Its leaves and its red berries do um, have that wintergreen fragrance. Yep. It's awesome. So I finally have some. I've always wanted that plant. I know I shouldn't be complaining about 40 degrees in January in Pennsylvania, but I'm chilly. Let's, let's go in the house and see about those seeds I told you I was wanting to sow. All right, 
here's the seeds that I got. I got moonflower vine, which this is the Ipimoea. It's related to a morning glory. Um, it is an amazing flower. You can actually watch it as it opens its petals. Um, it takes about 10 minutes, and they only open at night in the middle of the hot summer. So they have a long, a long growing season. So we're going to start those. Um, delphiniums. These take 28 days to, um, to germinate. So we're going to start those because they're going to take a long time. And these are painted daisies, which, um, pyrethrum which I grew one of the first seeds I ever I ever grew and this is a six to eight weeks before start on that one um and this is a Gallardia which is a perennial um the painted daisies are a perennial the um the delphiniums are a perennial so I might not see these I should the painted daisies I should see flowers this year and the Gallardias I should see flowers this year um, I don't know about the delphiniums. We'll have to see. Um, these are annual, the, 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 um, moon flowers. So we will see, um, these flowers if we have a long enough growing season. Now here I've prepared, I've prepared my, um, seed, little seed pots. And I've s sprayed them generously with with a lot of water uh, and there's a tray underneath here um because after after this watering i'm doing now they aren't going to get any more water sprayed on the top like this from from now on once i sow the seeds in here we're only going to water them by putting water in these bottom trays um, it, to prevent them from getting a disease called damp off. Another thing that we're going to do is we're going to sprinkle the top of this soil with just a little bit of this vermiculite before we sow the seeds. The seeds that we're sowing are small. Um, if you're sowing large seeds, you could sow the seeds and then put a layer of vermiculite on the top of the soil. But because the seeds that we're sowing here are um, very small seeds and they're perennials, so they're gonna take a little bit of a while in this container before they're large enough to handle. Um, we're gonna put that on again to prevent the damp off. And I have a dozen, I have a dozen little cells set aside for each one of these flowers. Um, and you know what? We're gonna start with the painted daisy right here. We really wanted just a dozen flowers in these two. And um, here's the seed. This. Okay, that's the size of the seed. It's pretty small. And this seed is okay to cover. Some of the seed that's really small, you don't want to cover. So we're gonna make a little dent here. And we're gonna put about three seeds in each of these spots. And I can feel, you can see how wet it is. So those are all done and in there and now we're going to work on the delphiniums.
Now the delphinium seeds can be covered with a little bit more soil, so we're gonna. And this is just potting soil, uh, seedling soil, seedling mix. And there's actually even a little bit of um of potting soil from potted plants. Some poinsettias that were finished when Christmas poinsettias that I had decorating around that were finished with. So those. That's the delphinium. It said um, an eighth of an inch. So that's just a light scattering across the top. And now I'm patting it in. So the seeds are going to make good contact with that. Um, and you know what? The seeds haven't germinated yet. So I can give them one more squirt. Just to, just to um, set them into the soil and make sure that they're making good contact with something moist in there that'll help them germinate okay now I'm gonna do these two just the same way um these are big seeds here I'll show you these now these are excellent seeds for you to save from year to year yourself. These flowers are, um, now this, these are large seeds, but these need to be scarified, and I will show you what that is. Scarifying is simply putting a nick in the outside of the seed. Um, well, you heard that one hit the floor. <laughs> See the, it's a very, it's a very hard seed. So what you wanna do, and I usually do it on the point of the seed, is sandpaper or a nail file and you want to break that shell using a sandpaper or an emery board and just rubbing till you break through that that hard shell um, you can use like nail clippers or toe clippers toenail clippers but what I do is I use my very sharp um, stem cutters and I see, can you see how? I've chipped away at that outer hard coating there to reveal the kernel on the inside. Now you wanna be careful, you don't wanna damage that kernel. Um, and then after that, we're gonna soak it in water. We're gonna soak this seed overnight before we plant it. So here again, we're just gonna take it, careful, and just chip off. Chip off that end. We're gonna do that with all two, four, six, eight, ten, all 12 seeds they gave me in this seed packet for $1.69. So here, let's see if I can keep the camera. And show you that, okay? Very simple. And drop it in the water. These Galeordias are not supposed to be covered. They like to be out. And they are strange looking seeds. There's one on the edge of the package. Can you see that? They're strange looking seeds. They have 
They almost look like a shuttlecock from playing badminton. Okay, I'm gonna put that in there. And I'm gonna cover these with a little bit more of this vermiculite. All right, we'll have to come back tomorrow for me to do that, the last little bit here. I was thinking about that rock out in the garden that I used as a marker so long ago. And this was one of the reasons why I had markers, because I used to map everything out. And uh, there's the rock. This is the first map I made, 1996 actual map. This is the 1996 um, wishing wishing map. Um, and there I still use the rock and I wished for yellow lilies because they're in pencil. And uh, over here they're in pen. So uh, This is a long, long time ago. I haven't made a map in a while. Look, the sun is shining. The sun's out. Man. Ooh, there's my shadow. The sun is feeling great. It finally came out. Yesterday we planted the seeds and started soaking the, um, moonflower seeds so today we're gonna plant the moonflower seeds and um, first we're gonna take a minute and enjoy the sunshine flower vine seeds all ready for us to sow and they look like they're wanting to sprout already from just being soaked overnight so let's go ahead and get those into their little seed cells It's interesting that we got just the right number of seeds in the packet to fill each cell. This one was floating though. We'll put that one in the corner. And all I'm gonna do is just, they're such big seeds that you can just take them and push them in. And I lay them sideways and push them in because they're gonna, the, the sprout's gonna come out of one end and the, um, it'll be easier if I just make a little hole. And the root is going to come out of the other end, so they can lay sidewards and they'll be fine. Here, let me make dents here. I don't want to risk injuring the seed by putting too much pressure on it when I push it down into the soil here. I thought I had enough for each hole. Yep, 12. There you go. Here, I'm just going to dump this quarter in there because there's no reason to waste it. And now I'm just going to cover the seeds back over just like you would do in the ground. have a prepared little marker. 
but trust me, I know what. And it's sitting a little taller than I want it. Trust me, I know what a moonflower vine looks like. Where it sprouts. And now, in order to water these trays, I'm gonna water them only from here on in. I'm only gonna water them by filling these bottoms up. And then, what these containers really are, are food containers, recycled, um, and they don't even have to go all the way down. It's fine if they just sit on top of there and keep the air above the seed, seed surface um, enclosed. But um, these are recycled food trays. They had cookies or pastries or something in them. I don't remember. But I've used them over and over again. They're very successful. So now we just have to wait. And here they are in place on my nice plant rack and right underneath them on the floor is a heat is a heat duct so things germinate really quickly here on this west window sill for me as a matter of fact as I was making room for these new arrivals I see see the little green in there these are snapdragons See the little green in there? And those are only the first couple. Oh, there's another one. There's another couple down in there. Um, those will, those are just the first harbingers of this Snapdragon tray. So there, there'll be many more of those. I've got some balsam under there and, um, and the ones that we just planted together. So we're well on our way. We're good. I, I've got I've got plant babies already, so that's awesome. I hope you enjoyed our little um, our little time planting together and our, our little foray into the garden. Um, please m make sure that you're subscribed. And until next time, bye now.